When we make changes to data in components, the view automatically reflects the changes depending on how you've coded it. We just tried that with the favorites. We had a flag which indicated whether a post was a favorite or not. And then we had a ng class which listen to those changes, kind of it was looking for changes to that flag and then based on that, it added or removed the classes from this div. Underlying all of this functionality is Angular's change detection in action. When you make a change to the data, you don't tell Angular that you've made a change. Angular automatically detects it and does the right thing. So Angular is constantly looking for changes in order to detect what got changed and what it needs to do to keep everything in sync. With Angular 1, there was this concept called digest cycle where Angular JS would tediously process all the data and make sure you know nothing has changed and if things were changed, it would make a list of it and then do the right thing. With Angular 2 plus, the framework is a little bit smart about this, but then it still has to look at everything in order to figure out what got changed. So we're gonna explore a couple of options which change detection and how you can customize it to make things work a little bit different. Some of it efficient, some of it not so efficient, but then I'm gonna tell you what are the options you have and then you can choose depending on the scenario. In order to illustrate those options, I'm gonna come up with this use case. I'm gonna implement a link at the top which provides a favorite all functionality. Just like we have the expand all, which expands all the posts you see, let's say we want to add a favorite all, which when you click on it, it favorites all the posts in this page. All right, so this is where uh, we're going to implement that link, and this is going to be in the blog list component. So just like you have this link here, I'm going to add one more. I'm going to create Let's put these in paragraph so that they go to two different lines. And uh, I'm going to call this favorite all. And then what this is gonna do is mark all of these as favorites. So I'm going to go to the component and create that function. Now, what does this function need to do? It needs to parse through the blog posts of the current page and then set the is favorite flag to each one of those. So I'm going to do a this. dot blog post of the start current page. So this is going to give me all the blog posts in that current page. And I'm going to run a for each on this. And for each post, I'm going to set this dot, sorry, it's post dot is favorite equals true. And I don't, I'm not gonna worry about setting it back to false. It's not a toggle, it's really just setting everything as favorites. So I'm gonna go here, click on favorite all, and you see here all the posts in this page are automatically favorited. So this is happening because of Angular change detection. Angular detects that the is favorite flag is set and it's actually the parent component which is doing it and the data is in the parent component and now in the blog post tile I'm using this ng class in order to set the right thing and uh, the class value gets set on the div and works seamlessly and of course I can override this by clicking on the favorite button here and I can of course click this again and set everything as favorites it all works just like you would expect it to so this is angular change detection in action. Now, if you think about what causes angular to detect this change, it is not the object itself. The blog post tile component is input the blog post, right? This is the post. This is the object that's input to a particular tile. And given a tile, it is working on an instance of blog post 
Does the instance change? No, it does not. It is still referring to the same blog post instance. We didn't really update the instances here, right? We're not updating the instances. We're just setting a property on the existing instances. So as far as the blog post title component is concerned, the instance really doesn't change. It is a property of the instance that has changed. And Angular is smart enough to detect that even if it's a nested property four levels deep, five levels deep, Angular is still smart enough to detect all those changes. And no matter what, how deep the change is, it still knows that something changed and then it, it does the right thing. But as you can imagine, when you have a complex object, when you have a comp an object that is multiple levels deep, changing one of those deeper properties is gonna mean that Angular has to check all of those properties to figure out what changed. And that can be pretty intensive depending on the object. Now, what if you want to tell Angular, don't check so much, check only if the object itself got changed and then if the reference of the object has changed, only then you detect the change. Otherwise, just ignore it. Don't go so much deep into the object to detect the change. So in that case, Angular would just check for the input. Has this post reference changed? If the reference is not changed, Angular is not gonna bother doing change detection. But only if the reference is changed, Angular is going to do the change detection. So this allows us to make the application more efficient and we're gonna tell Angular not to look at each and every property and sub-property to find out if something changed. All you're doing is checking the top reference. In order to do this, in order to tell Angular to only look at the top reference, you use this property of the component called change detection. This lets you configure how Angular does change detection for this component. And in order to configure this, you pass in an enumeration, which is change detection strategy. This has two options. It has the default, which is the default. You didn't specify it. This is the value that it takes. But you also have this option called on push. On push tells Angular to not look deep into the object to detect changes, but to only look at the reference to detect changes. But now notice what happens when I do this. When I click on favorite all, notice that nothing changes. Well, we did update the value of the is favorite flag, but since the reference to the object itself hasn't changed, well, it doesn't notice it, okay? That's because of the on push strategy. On push strategy is looking at the post at the top level, at the reference level, to see if the reference itself got changed. The reference did not get changed, well, Angular does not run the change detection. In this particular case, it obviously does not work because we are not changing the reference, but we still want the value to be updated. So on push strategy is not the right approach here. But if we were to change this, to not use a reference, but instead to map it to a new object. For each of these posts, if you're not updating just the variable, but instead I'm mapping it to a new object instance, then we're looking at immutable objects. An immutable strategy is perfect for the on push, right? When you have data or objects that are immutable, then you can confidently implement the on push strategy because you know that it's only the reference that changes and the deep nested properties are not changing. So how do you do immutable objects in this approach? Well, there is one thing you can do. I can do this. Instead of a for each, I'm going to map in the sense I'm replacing the object with a new object, okay? I am going to provide a new object here, and that is going to take the place of this existing object. And now since this is a new object, the reference itself is going to change, all right? So now here, what I'm gonna do is construct the new object. I'm gonna say title is going to be post.title 
summary is going to be post done summary but now is favorite is going to be true so rather than just set the flag on the existing object I'm doing a map and what the map does is it replaces values so I'm um, for each of these posts I'm returning a new object that I'm constructing on the fly where the existing values remain the same I'm copying over the existing values but I'm setting a flag to true and now when I do this I am essentially replacing all those objects with new objects now when I do favorite all you see here angular change detection kicks in before this when I was just doing a change in place the change was happening but angular didn't know about it because it was looking at the top level so by doing this you essentially make these objects immutable you are incurring a little bit of a performance cost in the sense that you're creating copies of objects each time you want to make a change but then you're incurring a performance benefit so that when the change detection needs to happen it doesn't look deep into the object it is just looking at the top reference when do you want to implement which strategy well it really depends on the structure of your object and how deep it is when your object is really deep you are risking the performance penalty when angular needs to check each level deep into the object for change detection so using on push is beneficial in that case for some small objects like this it's not so much of a performance penalty it's like it's a flat object it doesn't have to go deep change detection is possibly really fast in this case so in this case it really doesn't apply but in the case of complex objects if you want to use it you can use this approach for optimizing your change detection cycle.